All righty. Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, wherever you're possibly tuning in from. Hope everybody's doing well. Thanks for joining us uh, today. We're going to chat a little bit about Jellyfish Lake in Palau. Um, I got a little chat window here. If everybody can hear me okay, maybe you could just uh, say a quick hello or... Uh, yes, we can hear you fine. Rucker says hello, so that's always good. Annette, awesome, says sounds good. Thank you. It's good to know. Perfect. Aaron, hey, Aaron, awesome. Thanks for joining today. Right on. Well, we do like to start on time. I was a little bit late just trying to get some of the technology stuff up and so that we can broadcast this live on Facebook as well. But uh, kind of get this uh, going here. I got a quick poll real quickly. Always curious to see where people are tuning in from. And uh, also if you have a trip coming to Palau uh, Any time later this year, 2019, uh, if you have a trip coming. So, if uh, let me know, answer the questions on the poll, and then I'll, I'll share those with you. Yeah, too early in the morning, Canada, Lisa. You got your coffee. A little bit in Europe, maybe a couple people having a beer there. All righty. Cool. So uh, we got a little bit of mix. We got mostly people from the United States, Canada, and a little bit Europe. Europe, thanks for tuning in. I'll share the results with everybody here so you can see. And uh, let's get, uh, get this party started, so to speak. Okay. So we got basically in Jellyfish Lake in 2016, there was a large El Nino that caused all these beautiful jellyfish here to, to die off. So we'll go over basically what happened. I'll go over Jellyfish Lake and that's gonna be kind of the, the primary stuff we look at today. We do other webinars that go over how to get to Palau and things like that. I'm not going to go over that today, um, but let's let's start in with a little overview here, exactly like where uh, Palau is and all that. All right. So, um, go through these. I guess I better go in order. So, let's. Uh, my name's Chris. I'm with Palau Dive Adventures. The person who founded Palau Dive Adventures is Jason Maluchlu there on the right. He's a local Palauan and basically he came up with the concept of um, just having a, a real small personalized dive shop slash tour experience in Palau. Uh, so that's kind of who we are. We're the actual dive shop in Palau. For those of you who, who don't know, I'm broadcasting this uh, live out of Los Angeles today. Um, so this is our team in Palau. <clears throat> this was, uh, we took this picture about two weeks ago. So we got everybody together. We actually have 16 full-time people, um, everybody working together there. And what what I really, where this photo really stands out for me and what makes this photo really so awesome is the three people who originally started with Plow Dive Adventures six years ago are still around today. Um, so in the middle here, that's Jason, the founder, uh, one of our lead guides. And back here, Jay Wynn uh, was his helper in Palau. And then I was also one of the uh, people who uh, started and I got the uh, shortest straw and I had to uh, run U.S. reservations. So that's kind of what I do. Um, and I got some help with some other people here, but started off with three. 
and now it's uh, a nice big uh, pretty happy uh, I guess family there so to speak and we'll, we'll delve in a little bit more there as well um, so we got dive instructors dive guides boat captains uh, people that load boats a uh, lot that goes on behind the scenes so we usually have a crew of four on the boat, but you can see the big support staff that's behind all of that. Today, uh, participate. Uh, go ahead and, uh, you know, just uh, there's a chat window. If you have any questions, um, you know, just uh, basically uh, put it in the chat. I'll see it. I may not answer the question right away just to kind of keep the flow going a little bit but uh, drop in anything you have there. And I also have some people who have some earlier questions they sent me and I'll be sure to answer those. Okay, big disclaimer right here, right now. So when we're talking about Jellyfish Lake, this can get sci pretty scientific at times. And I'm letting you know right now, I'm not a marine biologist, I'm not a scientist. So what I'm gonna be doing today is, and the timing, oh, there we go, the next slide. I'm gonna keep it as simple as possible. So this is my, my motto sometimes, keep it simple, stupid, and uh, it kind of works for me but I'm gonna use as much uh, layman terms as possible and we'll, we'll kind of take it from there. Um, so the uh, format for today, you're gonna to be using a few maps just so you have an idea of exactly not only where Palau is, but where Jellyfish Lake is. So we got a few maps. And then again, I will discuss in detail what happened and also as um, sustainable divers and tourists how we can uh, help that lake be successful um, things like that there's also in the in the chat here there will be Rucker is also on our team and he'll be answering some of the chat questions and if some of you have been to Palau already feel free to um, you know, answer a question that you know the answer to. So we'll also be recording this um, and it'll be up on YouTube later on. That's uh, Rutgers job there to make sure that takes place. Okay, any other questions before we get into it here? Okay, cool. So, uh, this is basically where Palau is. So Palau's between, the way we describe it is between Guam and the Philippines. So it's about a, a two hour flight from Guam to Palau and then from Manila to Palau is a three hour flight. So we're smack dab in the middle of nowhere and we like that. Uh, it creates, um, some incredible, some of the best diving uh, this world has to offer because of uh, how remote Palau is and that there's no other ma major land masses for uh, thousands of miles. So, okay, big news in, uh, in Palau here. I'm gonna stop my video for a little bit. I think you guys have seen enough of me and you know I'm here, so let me just turn that off. So, Palau, in 2012 became a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Uh, I had to do a little bit of research uh, just in case one of you asked uh, the million dollar question what uh, UNESCO is or what it stands for. And it stands for the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. And to become a UNESCO World Heritage Site um, believe it or not, you only have to hit one of 10 criteria that they have laid out. Palau actually made the list based on, on five different criteria that uh, they have. So Jellyfish Lake is 
basically part of this World Heritage Site. So it's not all of Palau is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's just the Rock Island Southern Lagoon. So if you get bored later on today, you want to look up the Rock Island Southern Lagoon on UNESCO. It lays out um, the five different criteria. I took what kind of uh, the main criteria was that I saw. And this is a quote off of UNESCO. The Rock Island Southern Lagoon has exceptionally high biological and marine habitat diversity, 746 different types of fish species, 385 species of corals, and at least 13 species of sharks and manta rays, and seven species of giant clams, and the endemic nautilus, as well as endemic birds, mammals, and fauna. This all creates for an exceptional conservation value. So that's basically what UNESCO is looking to preserve. The um, next slide, there we go. The, the size of the UNESCO area that is um, under the World Heritage Site is here in blue. So that area covers approximately, it's a little bit hard to see here, uh, but it's 100,000 um, hectares. Uh, so in acres, that's 250,000 acres right there in the blue. And what I did not know is that there's also a buffer zone all around this. And as you can see, the buffer zone, excuse me, is this little dotted line all around here. And that buffer zone is uh, even a larger area. So the buffer zone is 400,000 acres. So you have this whole area where it's um, not only is it a UNESCO uh, conservation protected area, but there's buffer zones, there's marine protected areas by the, by the government, uh, shark sanctuaries, really Palau's doing everything they absolutely can to um, you know, protect this um, you know, for the future, um, just because it, it really is amazing to see. Okay, so um, in this, this bottom area right here, this is where Jellyfish Lake is. And uh, this is kind of, we just talked about that. That's the, the um, Palau was, uh, became a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2012. Those are the five criteria there. So again, and what's interesting also about this whole area, and here's Jellyfish Lake on the map. And if you look around, this is a satellite image, you can look at where the other marine lakes are. And in this whole, um, between Karor, which is up north a little bit, and south is Peleliu, in this whole area, there's 70 other marine lakes in this area, in the Rock Islands. Now, um, I'm sure somebody is going, well, do they all have jellyfish? No, they don't, but there, but there are other jellyfish lakes in Palau. Um, this one is the only one that's open to tourists. Um, the other ones are strictly for uh, conservation purposes. Any questions? Everything good? Okay. So here's Jellyfish Lake a little bit, a little bit closer up at, at the bottom here. You can see the, uh, the jellyfish. Uh, they migrate horizontally across the lake every day. And the reason they migrate is because um, there's a symbiotic relationship between the jellyfish and the algae that they actually grow inside of them. So the, the algae, um, to grow need the sunlight. So that's why they migrate across uh, this lake. The lake is, is brackish. So what that means is that it's salt water and fresh water mixing together. 
the lake is connected to the ocean through uh, tunnels and fissures that connect through the reef. And all of these connections to the uh, open ocean are more at the, the surface level, not at the uh, deeper levels there. Okay. Any questions so far about this lake? So the approximate boat drive time to this lake is 45 minutes. There's a, a short walk to the lake and it's, it's a little bit of a hike. I would recommend wearing some shoes that are, are comfortable uh, at, at a minimum flip-flops. If you have some old beat up uh, tennis shoes, those are always really good to take. The permits for the lake, if you know any tour company, we purchase those permits ahead of time before you go. The permit just to go into the lake is $50. Okay, let's take a quick look here. So this lake is uh, stratified. There are different layers on this lake. So the depth goes down, it's estimated around uh, 30 meters. The top 15 meters are about 45 feet. This is where the jellyfish are. It's oxygenated. This is where, you know, we snorkel only in this lake. There, this, this deeper area um, is where it's a toxic layer. So that's why there's no diving allowed is because of the uh, sulfur that's in this lake and it can get through your skin. And uh, it, it could be it's at least uh, unhealthy. I'm, I'm not sure that it would kill you, but um, you know, you, that's why we stay in this top area and it's uh, a snorkel only here. The water does not mix. Um, again, like I said earlier, the tunnels that feed the salt water just come up into the upper oxygenated area, okay? A same with like the rain runoff is just coming through the top here. So, and, and the wind that might mix the water normally because of the trees that surround the lake, we go back here, those trees prevent a lot of the wind from mixing the water anymore. So uh, the lake's very stratified and that's why we stay in the first uh, you know, 15 meters there. Mostly people, um, you know, they'll just go down a couple feet to see all the, uh, the jellyfish there. Uh, the lake is about 12,000 years old and the jellyfish, as you can see uh, in a later slide, they're the golden jellies. Okay, so this is just a, um, we talked about what the jellyfish eat and let's talk a little bit about what happened to them. So as we know, um, every few years, there are El Nino weather patterns. And what happened is that event in 2016 raised the water temperature, which resulted in um, the algae not being able to survive. So in essence, the jellyfish ran out of food. That's a simple, I'm sure there's more scientific and I, you know, a marine biologist could probably talk a lot longer on it. But that's basically um, what took place and caused the die off. So they're at the peak, you know, I've heard numbers anywhere between eight and 10 million, up to 20 million jellyfish in the lake when it's um, at the, you know, high end of having a ton of jellyfish in there. But right now, as of November, there's about a million jellyfish in there and we're expecting the lake to make a full recovery in uh you know throughout 2019 and hopefully within a year we'll be back up to the, the eight to ten million mark that's according to the scientists and and the uh marine biologists there 
So what can we um, as good sustainable tourists and as a sustainable tour operator do? So uh, a couple things for one is the limit the only go into that lake either with no sunscreen or wear sunscreen that's going to be reef safe. That's one. Number two is if we go into the lake with fins, it's better to go without, but it can be a little bit of a long swim, a couple hundred yards out and then a couple hundred yards back. So if you're going to be using fins to kick very uh, cautiously, through there. So Palau Dive Adventures, we're actually been certified as a, it's called Green Fins. And it is a, an agency in the UK that will come out and do a site survey and look at operations and deem them, hey, are they doing everything that they can do to be, um, you know, basically sustainable. And I, I could go into more on green fins and maybe we'll do that on another webinar. I won't go through it more today, but not only us, but there are other dive shops in Palau as well that have been certified by green fins. They came out there and did training for multiple dive shops. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So here's the uh, quintessential photo of Jellyfish Lake. It's a, uh, a snorkeler with uh, a million jellyfish around her and everybody hopes to get this shot. And uh, this shot is once again possible with the uh, return of the lake here. <coughs> Excuse me. All righty. Any questions about uh, jellyfish lake here? Everybody's still awake? Yes, no, maybe. All righty. So I'm going to kind of slowly, it's kind of like the bulk of uh, the webinar today. <clears throat> Jason's motto and our motto at Plow Dive Adventures has always been to, to come as guests and, and leave as family. So that we we hold to um we have a lot of guests that have come in the past and they've been multiple times and there's actually some uh tears at the airport <coughs> excuse me I'm trying to get over a a cold and flu that's just been going around uh the best time of the year to go mark is any time from november to june um so the, uh, for those of you who are thinking of a trip, I know uh, Mark and Aaron, you guys are coming with us, have been with us. Um, if you give you a quick little tip is to look at reviews on the different dive shops in Palau. Right now, we're the only five-star uh, dive shop in Palau. We're rated number one. Um, to tell you the truth, we're not for everybody. Uh, we have a fixed schedule. It's Monday through Friday, and we only take uh, 10 guests. If you want to do more a la carte and kind of wing it, uh, there are probably better operations to uh, go with. There's one last thing I'd love to share with you guys. <coughs> it's really awesome video. We shot it four days ago, and this is what we saw diving German Channel in Palau four days ago. It's amazing. And I'd like to share this video with you. German Channel is one of the top dive sites in Palau. And it's known for the uh, manta rays there. So, and what's, what's even almost more, well, I'll share some other stuff while this video plays here.
Right on. What did you guys think of that video? Let me jump back into the presentation here. Um, that was a, uh, yeah, that was German channel going off. So pretty amazing. So anyway, um, that's about all I have. Um, one, two quick things, excuse me. The, um, we try to do webinars every month. So if there's a topic that you would like to see me cover or go over, um, I'm happy to, we take a lot of input. <clears throat> I'm trying to get my video back up here. Let's see if I can uh, get my video back. So, um, Uh, there we go. So is there a webinar topic you guys would like me to cover for next time? What I'm going to do in January is a um, update for what's going on in Palau for 2019. There's, there's actually some pretty exciting stuff. So um, I will do the update for Palau next month. Anything else? Uh, I just did the top dive sites of Palau in November. So if there's a topic and you guys can think of anything, um, let us know. Mark, yeah, hope you get uh, better. Yeah, we can discuss things to do for non-divers as well. I'll, I'll go over that on another uh, webinar. Cool. Right on, you guys. Thanks everybody. Um, yeah, I can drop a link for the other uh, webinar. I'll, I'll find that stuff for you guys. Aaron, Mark, no problem. It might be on our, take a look at our, um, it should be on our YouTube channel. If you go to YouTube and look at Plow Dive Adventures, um, it'll be in there and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll try to get it sent out as well. Make a note there. Okay, thanks Rucker for confirming that. So yeah, just jump on our YouTube channel and you'll see uh, uh, some of the links there for our past webinars. All righty, um, anything else? So I'm gonna hang out here for, thanks for attending. I feel like I'm like the teacher in front of the class. You're free to go now. Maybe that's the old uh, teacher in me, I guess, I don't know. But if anybody has a question, um, I'm happy to answer anything that you have now. Okay, I don't see anything. So have a great uh, holiday, have a Merry Christmas, and uh, we'll see you guys in Palau sometime. Thanks so much for attending today. And uh, we'll see you out there. Thank you. Bye.